Hello everyone, thanks for tuning to today's first video. We do the first season one roundup for the autumn of 2020 for today's first video. A delay from uh, Sunday, so I should have got this recorded on Saturday night and released it on Sunday morning. That was the plan, but due to the tooth um i had to uh i had to put up a back burner but i want to get this one in before the end of the month it's the last day of june uh today so so yes that's uh, that's what we're going to do so uh, we're going to have the e 70 30 day look out of the uk and the rest of europe coming up as today's second video update um, and of course have a regular uh, 10 to 14 day video update with all of the usual features uh for today's third video update this video is going to be placed on the autumn updates page at gauss.com probably this evening uh, if not it'll be tomorrow and there'll be a written summary that goes with it as well just going over everything that we discuss in the video so we're getting 11 long range models uh, together we are short of some models for this update we haven't got the jma because it doesn't uh it doesn't stretch out to the um required time frame it only uh, goes uh through the next three months july august september so it doesn't cover enough of the autumn to make it worth in while including it I've also not got the Brazilian model again uh, this month. I'm not sure what's happened at, uh, with, at, with, at, in Brazil uh, with a Brazilian model. Uh, some reason has updated for the past couple of months. But we've got plenty to be getting on with. So, so uh, yes, that's what we're going to do. And I'll get on it for you uh, right now. So, we're going to begin with mean sea level pressure anomalies uh, for, um, for the Northern Hemisphere, or for the world, actually. Uh, but we're specifically focusing on the Northern Hemisphere from Kansas. This is Kansas mean sea level pressure anomalies via tropicaltidbits.com. Uh, so this is how the mean sea level pressure anomaly for the autumn of 2020 is looking with Kansas. It has an area of high pressure centered close to the country. Low pressure is up to the north. Jet stream is going northwards uh, as well. It looks like it should be a relatively high pressure dominated uh, autumn with Kansas. Uh, CANSIP's temperature anomalies are looking like this, so it's coming out with a mild of an average autumn, above average temperatures by around um, half a degree or so, not a big deviation, but it is certainly going for a slightly mild of an average autumn. And precipitation anomalies look like that. So uh, overall, it's going for a average precipitation anomaly. Again, although it does look a little bit dry, but average just to our west. You expect a relatively mild and uh, also anticyclonic sort of autumn uh, with, uh, with what Kansas is showing there. Okay, let's move on to IRI, which of course is International Research Institute for Climate and Society. Earth Institute and Columbia University as well. <laughs> so this is the uh, temperature probability for the autumn of 2020 via the IRI. And uh, the probability is neither favouring above or below average temperatures this autumn through much of northern and western Europe. Uh, so there's no signal either way, uh, really. It's not favouring warm and average autumn not favouring a colder than average autumn either. Precipitation anomalies for the autumn of 2020 uh, in terms of the probability uh, looking like this. Generally favouring a little bit on the dry than average side I think for northern and western parts of Europe. Overall it does look as though it could be favouring, probabilities could be favouring slightly uh, drier than average conditions below average rainfall for this autumn, but it is quite a weak signal. Uh, moving on to Patel Peng's analogue. So this is what Patel Peng is forecasting for his 200 millibar height anomaly uh, for the autumn of 2020 uh, this uh, this month. Now remember, Patel is uh, doing an analogue based forecast here. So he's looking at sea surface temperature anomalies across across the Earth, uh, and then uh, looking back at past years for a similar sea surface temperature anomaly, and then creating an analogue based forecast uh, based on those sea surface temperature anomalies. The 200 millibar height anomaly from Patel Peng looks like that, with above average heights generally centred over and slightly to the west of the country. Jet stream probably coming in something a little bit like that. It looks like it should be a relatively anticyclonic signal uh, with uh, Patel Peng's analogues for this autumn. 
Temperature anomalies are forecast to be above average during the autumn, around 1 to 2 degrees above average, so quite a warm uh, autumn is coming up. And also going for a drier than average autumn as well. Yes, we see drier than average precipitation anomalies uh, for the autumn of 2020. Uh, next up, we've got CFSV2. So this is the CFSV2 700 millibar height anomaly for the autumn of 2020. Very weak signals here. There's an area of above average heights in the Atlantic, perhaps hinting at a bit of a mid-Atlantic ridge. The Azores High looks like it's displaced uh, rather to our south, kind of like towards North Africa, that sort of area. And we come over here, there is a weak air below average heights up towards northern Scandinavia. Otherwise, not much else to go on. I would suspect we're probably bringing in the uh, jet stream. And west is perhaps a little bit like that. But again, not much to go on there. Not much to go, go on from a precipitation, uh, from a temperature anomaly perspective either. Overall, coming out with uh, no signal, I think, really, with all of that white going on. Precipitation always again, very, very weak. CFS, I don't think at the moment CFS got much of a clue about this autumn. Just looks a little bit wetter, perhaps, since it's been a little bit wetter for the northwest of Europe. But, I mean, it's such a weak signal, but I don't think there's, there's much to be uh, gained from the CFS uh, there for autumn 2020. Uh, ECWF means sea level pressure anomalies uh, looking like this. This is a stronger signal. High pressure generally from the Atlantic into much of western, southwestern Europe. Probably low pressure is going to be through here. You'll think the jet stream is coming through rather like that. Just looks like a typically sort of westerly type uh, autumn. Albeit with quite a bit of a high pressure centre very, very close to the country. Uh, ECM temperature anomalies are looking like that, a little bit above average, uh, only by about half a degree or so, not a big deviation either way, uh, half a degree to one degree really across much of, uh, much of Europe. So, so yes, uh, just very close to or slightly above average with the temperature anomaly. Uh, precipitation on is again very very weak signals uh but probably if anything favoring being slightly drier than average particularly to our southwest a bit wet than average up to uh, the north of course uh right let's move on to the copernicus suite of uh, models i've got metro france next this is the mean cell pressure anomaly from metro france for the autumn of 2020 with high pressure generally favoured to be over UK and much of Northern Europe as well. Looks like it's an anti-cyclonic autumn being predicted by Metro France. Temperature anomalies are forecast to be average to slightly above. Again, it's not a particularly big deviation, only around half a degree uh, above average. Precipitation anomalies, again, really weak signals, possibly hints at being ever so slightly on the drier side, but really no signal. Uh, for precipitation there from Metro France. Uh, this is a DWD. This one's a little bit different. Uh, DWD means a pressure anomaly for the autumn of 2020. Going for, going for some higher pressure to be to the north within the northern latitudes. Higher pressure up towards Svalbard. Higher pressure over towards Greenland and Iceland. Uh, so you'll think this favours perhaps bringing in some colder weather, perhaps. Perhaps bringing in some colder weather through this autumn. Temperature anomalies from the DWD are actually slightly below average, or slightly colder than average autumn being forecast. We don't see that very often with the seasonal models, so that is something very different. Uh, a colder than average season being forecast there from the DWD via all of that uh, northern blocking, of course. And precipitation anomalies, again, no particular signal. Uh, hints have been a bit dry and average up to our north, where we've got all the blocking, of course. Um, but overall, again, no particular signal for precipitation from DWD. Uh, and then we've got the CMCC Mediterranean model. Uh, this one, again, uh, is reverted back to Wesley. So, again, similar to the ECMDF in some ways. High pressure centred to our south. Lower pressure is to the north. Winds are in from the west uh, as well. Certainly no northern blocking there. We've got low pressure within uh, the northern latitudes uh, with that one. And we're driving in Wesley so off the Atlantic. Temperature anomaly is very weak signals uh, again, but does seem to be colder than average to our north and to our west. So might hint at a cooler 
uh, tight autumn. So not a particularly warm autumn being favoured there, let's put it that way. And could hint to the cold of an average autumn, but in a different route to uh, to DWD, but the route to that is like with Westerlies, which would actually be quite unusual uh, in the autumn to get a cold and average season from Westerlies. So I'm not sure about that really. And also go for a slightly above average rainfall uh, anomaly for this autumn, not just for the UK, but for much of Northern Europe. So uh, a much more unsettled type uh, autumn with uh, CMCC, low pressure control, quite a quite a cool autumn, quite a quite a quite a quite a, quite a cool westerly flow, but uh, with below average, uh, with above average rainfall and slightly below average temperatures, if anything. Jams Tech uh, temperature anomaly looks like this. Actually going for a slightly cooler than average autumn again. So we have got one or two of these models going a bit cool for this autumn, which is quite unusual. Uh, quite unusual for that to happen. Generally, these long-range models are favouring warmer than average temperature anomaly. So this is a little bit different to what we've seen uh, in a season model round for a very long time, actually. So Jams Tech favours a slightly below average temperature anomalies for this autumn. And a rather dry of an average autumn uh, being signalled as well, just a little bit on the drier than average side. Notice cold average across Scandinavia is probably a trough of low pressure through there and then higher pressure through here. Uh, and that just about places us on quite a in quite a cold sort of north to northwesterly type flow. Beijing Climate Centre, 500 millibar height anomaly penultimately looking like that, with above average height centred over the UK and much of the Northern Atlantic. So Beijing Climate Centre season model is going for high pressure to dominate during uh, this autumn. Slightly above average temperatures being forecast by the Beijing Climate Centre season model as well. And the precipitation anomaly is drier than average, which is not a surprise if we've got a big area of high pressure parking itself right over top of the UK and the North Atlantic. And then finally, this is how the UK Met Office uh, Glossy 5 season model is looking. And again, this is mean sort of pressure anomaly going for high pressure to be dominating over and just to the west of the country. Lower pressure is up here, jet stream is up there as well so it's an anti-cyclonic autumn being signaled by the uk met the temperature anomaly is slightly above average and the precipitation anomaly perhaps hints at being slightly above average as well very similar uh, slightly below average i should say very similar uh really to what beijing climate center is uh, is showing there Right then, so uh, a lot to digest uh, with that one. No real signal. I think that's the upshot, uh, really. There's a lot of variation between uh, those models in terms of the overall scenario. Most of them are favouring above average temperatures for this autumn, but we have got a small minority that are favouring cold, a colder autumn, which is a little bit different because we don't normally see any models going below average uh, most of the time. So, so that's a little bit different. That's a little bit unusual. Slight uh, sort of minority uh, favouring... Um, you know, uh, a below average temperature of this autumn. Most of them are still going for above average temperatures. And um, the overall patterns uh, look very different from, from model to model. If anything, there's perhaps a signal for uh, for this autumn to be anti-cyclonic, dominated by high pressure. But, um, just rolling me sleeves up. <laughs> but, um, but, but, Again, we have got several there that, that, are, that are more unsettled too. So I think really we say that it's the first update. It's month number one. We're going to do uh, updates again in July and the final one will be in August. And uh, I suspect we will know more uh, as, uh, as we come to update number two and update number three. But, uh, but that's it. That's what that's what they're showing uh, for this uh, for this month. Anyway, next month, I'm not sure whether we're going to have a Brazilian model back again. It could be that that's been taken uh, taken down for, for some reason. Maybe uh, something's gone wrong at the Brazilian Met Office. I don't know. But we'll definitely have the JMA on stream uh, next month. So, so there'll be another model to add into uh, the mix next month. Okay, this video will be placed on the Autumn Updates page, and there'll be a written summary that goes with it as well. I'll try and get that up for you tonight. If not tonight, then it will definitely be tomorrow. 
I've got the ECWF 30-day look ahead coming up for the UK and for Europe uh, later on. And uh, we'll also have the uh, regular 10 to 14-day V update with all of the usual features. For the first autumn 2020 season one roundup, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.